If Tenille Campbell's journey to Tokyo 2020 was to be compared to one of her races, it would be an uphill, long and winding race. Well, we're here with Tenille Campbell. But today she reflected with us in the place where it all began two years ago, at her manager's home in his small gym. He believed in me when no one else did and he took the initiatives to even dig in his pocket if he had to fund something for me and that was really genuine and nice to actually meet that type of person. Desmond Roberts, the president of PSL Cycling Club, is her longtime manager. I want to go back to Southern Games in um, 2016. Um, she was studying and she was sitting on the scoreboard and doing her work. And when they called for her to do a race, she, she went out, did a race, come back, study, did a race, come back and study. And I looked at that and I said, this young lady has somewhere to go. Roberts was right. Three years later, and she's become the first woman in the English-speaking Caribbean to qualify for an Olympic Games. But while this week she was thrusted into the spotlight, Campbell can't help but remember those who were and weren't in her corner. We see the headlines now. Uh, but there was a time when people didn't believe that Tenille Campbell could achieve anything in cycling. Mm, yeah, uh, it's kind of funny because now it's the same people coming to try to talk to me or get on to me. So, I mean, that's kind of a scary feeling for me because y you don't know who is coming to you genuine right now. So, yeah. The one woman who never left her side was 1989 Sportswoman of the Year, Euphenia Huggins. Her mother. Yeah, she's really happy um, being an athlete herself and this being the only game she never qualified for. So um, I'm, I hope that she will be there with me in Tokyo and can live that dream through, through, through her daughter, myself. So There's a saying in cycling, the race is won by the rider who can suffer the most. Ryan Beichu, CNC3 Sports.